Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today I am joined by the traits and ancillaries guru from RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. Well, not just the version 0.6 from RTR Imperium Serectum overall. Welcome, Lusitanio. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for the presentation. I'm still recovering a bit from being ill, so don't mind my boys. <laughs> it's fine. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. Yeah, it's fine, man. Don't worry. It's absolutely fine. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. It is a pleasure. And today we are going to be going through all of the new traits and ancillaries. Uh, well, not every single one because there's a lot, <laughs> but all the new changes for 0.6 uh, and going through. And we're going to be doing that in the guise of playing a Antigonid slash Seleucid slash Carth Carthaginian campaign just to show you guys how these new traits evolve and uh, what's been added into the game. So, Starting Lusitania, let's first talk about the traits in general. So what has changed since 0.5? I know it's a lot, but like a brief synopsis of what's changed since 0.5. Yeah, so it's been a complete redone. Basically, a long time ago, Aeol asked me to um, start over. Basically, we pick up the original vanilla file from traits and ancillaries, and we just started adding traits from there. So everything that uh, players know from 0 0.5, it will be completely different. We kept uh, pretty much most of the Roman traits because the system was already pretty much well done. I just uh, reworked some of the bonuses because it was crazy. Like some bonus were giving 5, 4 influence, uh, 3, 4 command. That's too much. Uh, one of the things I've been... Um, Working a lot on traits for this uh, mod version is basically to balance it. You yeah. still find uh, generals with uh, quite some influence, but influence is the thing that doesn't matter that much. But command now will be a lot harder to gain. Management so so, and also you won't have uh, like generals with 15, 16 influence going around all the time. Yeah, cool. So pretty. Pretty different. And uh, yeah, we have a, a very huge list of things that we have added. It's been hours working on this, balancing stuff. And I can, yeah, I can tell you quite a few of the stuff that we have added. Like, one of the things I'm most proud of is the Arshan traits. That mechanic, uh, we started. Basically, they are unique traits for every city in the game. Hmm. Right now, we have around uh, 1,500 traits. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just for that. Basically, when your uh, Greek general stays in a city, you will get the Arshan, which is the governor trait. And uh, also seen some fans um, discussing in the... Reese Discord about uh, adding pers uh, unique descriptions for the cities, and this is a way that we could also do. It, do. And um, I'm still working on the descriptions, but I will eventually add uh, quite a lot of descriptions for these Arshan traits. Not too much, like for example, Europa Barbarorum, but uh, it will have a short description of the city, so it, it's really good for the overall flow. Yeah, cool. And, uh, well, yeah, we have uh, 1,700 cities in the game and <laughs> one, around 1,500 Arshan traits. I bas basically, I only, I just didn't have the uh, Arshan traits for the Germanic and Britonic cities and a few others, because uh, I will mostly sure add them eventually, but uh, this is still a, a lot of work, so. Yeah. <laughs> so we got one on screen now. So like this uh, Hipponikos the Holy from Megara. This man is from Megara City at the Isthmus. Uh, Isthmus. <laughs> During its history, it was a member of the Peloponnesian League, then the Dalian League, then the Peloponnesian, Achaean, Boeotian, and once again, the Achaean League. So yeah, you've got loads of little traits in there for extra history. And I do love all the descriptions as well. Uh, of a lot of these traits, you know, it's really cool. And I think it's in the uh, the spirit of the original as well, because a lot of the time in the original, I'll try and find someone with zero influence actually to show you if it's still the original one. 
He's got four influence. Let's try and find someone with zero. Uh, might be one of these guys over here. How about you? Yeah, you've got zero influence. Like, these are quite funny. <laughs> and I think some of the, uh, the descriptions you've done as well are quite funny. So zero influence. The stuffed olive has more influence than this man. It could choke someone important and change history. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is great. Yeah, game originally. Um, the other the city trait that you show, it's actually not an Arshan trait. Oh, okay. You point that. Um, but it's also one feature that uh, we added, and I'm going, going to talk about. Together with the Arshan traits, those are the governors. So if you live uh, generally in the city, you will get that trait. But uh, point taken, it's a unique trait. It's one of my favorite features from Rome Remaster, which means that only one general can get that trait. So, and we also have the city traits. Those traits, we have about 400 city traits, all manually done by me. Uh, they are uh, traits, well, they just define where the general comes from. The descriptions, they have been added by other members, like uh, Mozolos, we have been working on the descriptions and they for now they look really good still not not finished yet but uh, soon to be yeah cool then so, we also have the tribal traits yeah sorry <laughs> yeah sorry uh, so I, i'll just go through we've got one of the archon traits here so archon of megalopolis the uh, aristodemos of megalopolis he's got the archon of megalopolis so this man is the archon of megalopolis archon is a greek word that means ruler or lord Frequently used as a title of a specific public office. In ancient Greek, the chief magistrate in various Greek city-states was called the Archon. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so you say what only one general can get one of these traits. Uh, each of these traits, I guess, for each city. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm still working on the anti-traits for that. Because another good thing of the remaster is that we can have, like... Um, a infinite number of anti-traits so this allows me to have a good flow of it because um, like they are unique traits but uh, in this game we have so many cities that easily you can just uh, uh, put one general in another city and uh, before if you had uh, one of the Arshan traits you wouldn't be able to get the other one but now I just I'm starting to add them as anti-traits Mm. And uh, you will easily just lose the other and get the other one. Oh, that's great. That's otherwise, fantastic. yeah. Otherwise, you can just leave him outside of the of a city for one turn, and he will lose the trait. Cool. So it's a lot more. There's a lot more going on with how you want to govern your cities as well with that sort of thing, isn't there? And leaving people in cities for a long time. Um, I think. Obviously, if you don't want to go into this amount of depth, then you don't need to. Just look at the base stats <laughs> of the guys. If they got good management, then put them in the city. But if you want to role play and you really want to de delve uh, deep, deep, <laughs> delve uh, deeply into all your characters, then this is definitely very welcome and, and really cool. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, I'm. I will. Well, I'm still a member of Europa Barbarorum 2, and I used to play a lot of Europa Barbarorum, as well as Roma Sorectum, Rome Total Realism 7, so I uh, I understand the, the need to have the historical stuff, but also to allow for a more an, an easier gameplay, because we can't have traits uh, that uh, completely destroy the way that you are... Um, playing the game. For example, in Europa Barbarorum 2, you have your generals that need to come to Rome from, from time to time to have the council elections. Mm. And honestly, that's really not a very good gameplay. Why? Because you are not going to send your general that is uh, in Africa three turns for one year just to arrive to Rome to get a trade. Yeah, exactly. But... Um, I'm not uh, criticizing Europa Barbarum. If you look at the traits, you'll see that uh, I put a lot of um, love from from it in the in the traits. We have some quite some really cool mechanics that uh, were also from Europa Barbarum. 
many of them were um, completely changed and adapted, especially because now we have more options with the remaster. But they are still very good, like uh, the smart, charismatic, big, vigorous mechanic and the selfless, op optimistic traits that generals get when they c come of age, when you get a new general. That will impact a lot your campaign. Especially if you want your uh, generals to get, uh, like, uh, get to, to become better governors, to become better generals. If you have a general that is a smart and charismatic or vigorous general, you want him to uh, go on military campaigns, to stay on cities with academies, to get uh, better trades and ancillaries. Yeah. If he's not that smart, well, he, he might still get some nice traits if you live in him in a good city, but uh, it won't be um, that uh, fast, let's say. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll open that now. We've just had the turn end. By the way, guys, um, normally the turn ends are quicker than this. <laughs> it's because I'm recording uh, this video and also streaming it so Lusitanio can see it. So... It's going to be a little bit slower than it normally would, just so you know. Uh, but like, yeah, let's uh, let's take Dimitrios the Handsome here. Let's get him, and let's have a look at his uh, his uh, his traits that he just got from just uh, spawning in. So what you were talking about then? The uh, let's have a look. Oh, that's Dimitrios. Oh, that, sorry, it was uh, a ski loss of Eritrea, wasn't it? Uh, so Eritrea, yeah. he's venal. <laughs> Uh, superior builder, where we are, security conscious, let's go find, so here we are, here it is, so he's astute, uncharismatic, and vigorous, so this man's low social skills make him ill-suited for public seeking or politics, but his intelligence and vitality could be put to use as a wily general or efficient governor, he might not be the most inspiring leader, but men are better served by an able leader than a flashy one, uh, these personality uh, traits impact the general bonuses such as influence, troop morale, command, hit points, and management. Uh, and he's also indifferent and balanced. This man marches to the beat of his own drums. He doesn't like being dependent upon others, dealing with life in a balanced way. So these things will obviously, like you say, really affect how this guy is going to get on in life. He is 45, so he's not going to be around for too much longer in this game anyway. Um, but yeah, so with these well. astute... So the astute one, that's the that's the intelligence, right? So we've got the intelligence there. Um, uncharismatic is obviously the charisma they have, and vigorous is, I guess, their health. So, like, how many levels of each one of these is there? So, with astute, say, is it where does it go from? Does it go from dumb up to very intelligent, or something like that? Um, yeah, pretty much. We have <laughs> um, five levels for each one, so we can go from um, very from not intelligent at all, to very intelligent, really depends. Uh, and it's for each one of them, so charismatic. These are hidden traits, so you don't see them. You just see that part, which is the general one, for example. Because yeah. it's a combination of three different traits. Cool. And does that have an impact then on their directly, or does that then just impact the other traits they have? So. Well, both, both ways. It has a direct impact. So, for example, a uh, general that uh, is uh, char super charismatic, super intelligent, and uh, has a great charisma, he will uh, have uh, quite a few bonuses. Let me yeah. check which one. Yeah, okay, cool. he well, will we'll have, have, for example, one management, two influence, uh, troop morale, one more eight points. So it really depends on on the trait combination. It's not like huge bonuses, but it's uh, like a starter. And then they will, uh, for example, get more chances to evolve. In in your case, your the other general that you show is not very charismatic, mm. so you won't get uh, like traits. Uh, for charisma, but uh, you can perfectly leave him in the city with a, with an academy and see if he gets some very good traits. Or you can also take him to lead the uh, armies because he's still vigorous, and vigorous is uh, a very good um, trait 
for uh, leading armies as well. Yeah, so like our faction leader, Antigonos, uh, which is great. It's Antigonos the Ganatus, right, at the start of the campaign, I believe. Um, I, yeah. I'm sure that's right. I, I think that's right. Yeah, because uh, Pyrrhus just died two years before. So, yeah, it's Antigonus the Ganatus. Um, and he is bright, magnetic, and vigorous. So he has really good traits. Like, he has really good. So he's one that you want to either, you know, be in your main city or rule or, like, uh, leading uh, men in battle, of course, um, which I think is just really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I I think it's like a good answer. Someone let me know in the comments because I don't want to... <laughs> Someone's going to be putting actually down there right now and I'm going to look like an idiot, but yeah. Um, so I think that's really cool. Like, you've got a lot of these, um, these traits and everyone is different then. So everyone is quite different. So you've got all different things for everyone and everyone's kind of unique. So if we go to Alexandros, let's have a look, see what he's like. Uh, if we come down... He's again bright, magnetic, and uh, vigorous. But he's individualistic and optimistic. So this man likes to think and do things. So should we go through these ones? So these traits, they're individualistic and optimistic. So I guess the individualistic is how much they care for the for the rest of the community and how much they care for themselves, I guess. And then optimistic is, you know, whether they're optimistic or pessimistic. I guess are those five levels as well. Um, yeah, exactly. You guess right. Five levels for those as well. You go from being egotistical, selfish, to being super altruistic, magnanimous. And uh, you go from being depressed and happy to being very happy. So, um, yeah, they can influence a lot. Uh, other traits, like me, for example, check some of the triggers that we have in the file for that because we have so so much stuff so yeah so here it says he's more likely to be religious generous or compassionate as well um so it will tell you in the trait he's more likely to get certain other traits and we you might even have some of those traits uh and you can see well, financially financially irregular probably from the fact that he's individualistic <laughs> as well um exactly so. those type of traits they are, can be like um, uh, a knife in the back, let's say. You might think, oh, my um, my general is magnanimous, that's great. But uh, then he might not be that good of a commander, or might not get commander traits that fast, because he will try to safeguard his men, for example. Mm. And uh, a general that is, is not that selfless, it will get more chances to become uh, more disloyal, for example, to become a better commander, be have more tactical skill, to be more better disciplinarian. It really, really depends. Yeah, cool. I, I think that's really cool. It just gives some ind individuality to everyone, um, of course, which is really cool. So uh, let's just have a look. This guy is reliable as well. So we've got this trait in here. And is that the loyalty mechanic that's been... Uh, added in as well yes kinda we have been working with the loyalty mechanic is first we tried with shadow factions mm. but the problem with the shadow faction is that uh, when you add them to the faction if there is a revolt let's say uh, you're playing as the silo kids and you conquer a settlement in in Italy if you get a revolt there from one of your cities, it will go to your shadow faction. So um, that doesn't make much sense, because it entirely removes the rebel faction from it. So we are working on it, and uh, working on a different kind of script for that. We have a few already, but this, it's still a work in progress. So for now, those loyalty traits, they still impact your campaign and your channels, for example, the more loyal you are, you might get uh, law bonuses. Mm. And the less loyal you are, you'll get uh, unrest. Yeah, that makes and sense. And then uh, there are also other triggers for it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So uh, so this guy, um, so we've put him into Pella now. And I've just added in a, as everyone's just seen, an academy. So when we press the end turn and go to the next turn, We'll see as he uh, as he grows and gets some better traits. He's currently a two two influence six management, so he's already quite a good manager as well. 
So, yeah. He's a greedy guy as well. He's very greedy. Uh, but he's very faithful. And he's from Dion. Uh, and he's kind of opt optimistic. Uh, yeah. So he was the Archon of Dion. So we'll probably see that go as well. Uh, when we do this. Should we, should we talk slightly then about dynasty traits as well? We now got dynasty traits in the game. Yeah, sure. So, um, it's one of the requests that they all wanted me to have. And, uh, it's, um, well, nothing particularly complex, I would say, <laughs> after seeing all the other traits. Basically, um, dynasties like the Antigonids, Seleucids, Ptolemy-likes, they will uh, have these traits that identify them and give some special bonuses and uh, they will pass them to, the, to their kids. So it's a nice way of you to be able to track your uh, main dynasty. Yeah, cool. So you can kind of, uh, rather than having to go on to the uh, faction family tree, you can see who's an Antigonid or who's a Seleucid. Uh, that sort of thing, uh, which is really good. So this guy, let's have a look. Does he have an Antigonid? I don't think he does. So we know he's not part of the family. He does have Stratahost though, which is nice. Uh, but yeah. Uh, whereas if we go and find... Where was the faction heir? Here he is. Demetrios. So Demetrios should have that Antigonid. Antigonid. There we are. He has the Antigonid. So we know he's part of the family. So it's a lot easier to choose your faction heir now, I guess, as well. Uh, with that, you can just search for that rather than going through the family tree. Because if you're playing like the Seleucids or the Ptolemies or something, trust me, the family tree can get pretty large. So, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a little bit easier that way rather than going all the way through the massive family tree, uh, which is cool. Um, so let's uh, I'll press the end turn again. And uh, while we're talking about, let's talk slightly about the uh, the religious and cultural traits as well. Now, firstly, before you uh, before you mention anything, Lusitani, I'll just say to everyone, we are going to do a video on the new cultures because some of you eagle-eyed people will have noticed in the economy video last time, there's some new buildings. And there's also, as you can see from looking at the traits of a lot of these people, they have uh, many different cultures, Greek cultures at least, now as well. So um, uh, I would just say that we are going to do a video on that. So if you are wondering about all of that sort of thing, then uh, we will do a video on that. We're not here to talk about that right now, but we will talk about the traits. So uh, do you want to just talk about a little bit about those religion and cultural traits then, uh, Lucitario? Yeah, sure. So I really enjoy those uh, religious cultural traits because they bring a different uh, mechanic, a different strategy to the campaign. Before you, you had a lot of cities and um, like uh, in the Greek areas, there wasn't much of um, difference between cultures. Mm. But now we have so many religious culture traits that identify their culture, that you'll get uh, unrest in certain cities. You really need to... Uh, it's not uh, too crazy. Like, there, there aren't 50... There are, like, I think it's 10, 12, something like that. But uh, it still means that you'll need to be a bit more careful. Let's see which general you are sending to and uh, address better the conversion between generals. But it's pretty good. It really shows a bit more char character from where your generals are. And it gains a lot of life, let's say. Especially as we are playing with four turns per year. Yeah. Which is also one thing I wanted to address about that, because you left your general in uh, an academy. And, uh, well, yeah, it's uh, it's not going to happen in one turn. Uh, that I'm no, sure. Yeah. It's... You will get um, quite some nice traits, but uh, especially the better, as as you upgrade your academy, more chances you'll get for that. Mm. But it still will take some time. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to talk about, it's the new ancillaries from uh, Rome Total Realism 7. If you uh, were a player of Rome Total Realism 7, they had some really fun ancillaries that uh, represent uh, scrolls made from ancient philosophers and other writings. 
Mm. And I managed to uh, pick them all and put them in the mod. So that will feature in the next update. And it's really one of the most exciting things. But of course, one of, you won't see them every time either. Yeah. But it's still pretty good. Yeah, cool. So we, we... Also... Sorry, go on. Yeah, thanks. There is also another mechanic from Rome Total Williams 7, which some may remember, which was your generals will be interested in humanities, in sciences, war, mathematics. I've added that as well and uh, improved it even further. So now we have three levels for each one, and I added two more interested in war and interested in geography. And that uh, also brings another level to your generals. So if you have smart generals, you can lead them in cities with academies and they will uh, maybe get uh, interested in humanities and get more influence in science and be more useful to govern cities. It really depends. So yeah, you can see this guy here, Hal uh, sorry, Halkionius is a student of war um so you can see that gives a bit of influence there um so yeah he's a student of war he's interested in war uh which is really cool and he also yeah. has one of these new traits as well sorry new uh, ancillaries bibliophylax i don't believe that was there before I, I don't think i've seen it anyway um so he's an official who manages the archives in the capital and in provincial cities in the hellenistic kingdoms as well uh which is really cool uh, but yeah and he's also a grey man. <laughs> a scary, scary man. The grey man, of course. So let's have a look at the uh, sort of military traits then, shall we? Have a look a little bit at the military traits. So in here, let's have a look. He should have that winter trait. So if we go down, winter campaign, you can see. Uh, historically, there were seasons for campaigning. This varied depending on climate and custom. Winter was usually not the time for armies in the march. So you can see he's got... 25% less movement in the winter as well. And, of course, we've got this supply uh, trait here as well. Belts tighten. This general and his army are running low on quite a few crucial supplies, around a half rations or worse. And that gives minus 2 morale and minus 10% movement as well. This can occur when under siege, campaigning out of season, or when away from your home territory, especially if the general in charge is not a great logis logistician. So I guess that one. So the supplies mechanic then. So how long does that take to kick in? Does that take one turn outside of your own city, uh, outside of the land? Uh, that sort of thing? Uh, well, it's uh, it really depends on a lot of stuff. Uh, it also depends on your general traits. Mm. And uh, for example, uh, your every, every one of your general starts with uh, a specific amount of the um, of that trait, and then depending on how long he stays outside of um, in enemy territory, for example, he will start gradually losing. Yeah, losing the trait. Uh, but it's a very good mechanic. It's, it's one of the mechanics I really love from Europa Barbarorum, and I I had to adapt it for this. Mm. Uh, and so far, I'm really enjoying it, especially due to the scripts that we um, we added. I'm not sure if you want to present that now, or if you want me to talk about it. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, you can talk about that. Yeah, it's great. Ah, cool. So, basically, one of the things that fans always complain about from Total War was the lack of attrition. Mm. Let's say you could take your uh, armies from Spain to India, and you you wouldn't lose a single man if you uh, didn't uh, have any battle. Yeah. However, now with Rome Remaster, we can add some uh, scripts, which I added with uh, Eduardo's help. And uh, basically, if your supplies get too low, you will lose men in the next turn. Mm. So you you need to be careful with that. It's not a crazy amount, but you will still lose some men there. And uh, then it also, we also have other traits. For example, there's a desertion trait where your troops might start to desert you. If your general is a bad commander, if he doesn't have a high enough charisma. And also a disease trait. 
where your general may get a disease trait and uh, you lose quite a lot of men if that happens. But uh, mm. overall it's a really fun mechanic because you, you can't just leave your general there in the city and wait for for the city to surrender. You uh, need to pay a bit of attention to what's going on and decide what happens. Also, another thing is the moral bonuses. One thing that uh, almost every mod didn't care about was the bonuses that they, they would give, especially morale. Like, your generals all have so many, so much morale, that uh, the morale of your troops, it didn't matter at all. Like, if your um, uh, basic militia has 6 morale or your sacred band has 20, it doesn't matter because your general has so much morale that the, the troops will never rot unless your general dies or something happens. Yeah. And that, that was because your generals had a huge amount of traits giving them morale bonuses that would go like 20 morale bonuses. But uh, you won't see that happening now in Reese because morale bonuses are very rare and morale deductions, models, whatever you can call it, they are quite more often, so it will be more important for you in battle to manage your troops mm. and decide what to do. And it's very good. Yeah, yeah, I love. And uh, already in 0.5, there was quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of um, really cool uh, morale bonuses and debuffs as well. And they come from a lot of the time. It comes from a battle, doesn't it? If you if your general runs away, then he's very likely to get a coward trait or something like that. Whereas if he's in the fight, absolutely smashing people, then he's so much more likely to get a good trait. And uh, sorry to everyone watching, by the way. <laughs> watching me press, uh, try and move character out five times. I'm sure you were all shouting at the screen because I was spelling this guy Zapyrus and not Zapyros. <laughs> and I was wondering why it wasn't working. Uh, but we're going to leave him in the desert for a few turns and see what happens when we come back. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's press the end turn again then. Uh, but yeah, those military traits sound really, really cool. I do like them. Um, is there any way to kind of see your overall morale effect, or do you just have to go through the traits then uh, through the through the UI? Uh, well, if you click on your generals and you click on the effects, you can see uh, the overall uh, bonuses that they have. That's mm. the best thing I would say. Apart from that, you just need to check the traits. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Ah, oh, sounds good. Um, so, you know how to, how to, how to check it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, should we talk a little bit then about? So, you talked about the interested in humanity, sciences, war, mathematics, and the scrolls before. Um, so, how do they kind of get them? Is that then? Does that then link in, obviously, to their smart, charismatic, vigorous, selfless, and optimistic ones, um, and their sort of base personality that they get straight from the get-go? Well, pretty much. Uh, right now, they uh, they can get those traits if they are not ignorant and if they have a. Natural intelligence above two points, so we have five points for that level. If they yeah. are, they have three, four, or five, they will get that trait, as well as natural energy. Because if you are like lazy, you won't care about science, humanities. You will just care about your life. So generals need to have an energy and intelligence to have those traits. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Oh my God, we've got rebels attacking us. Are you kidding? Rebels? <laughs> Filthy rebels. Yeah, rebels. They can be quite active now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. We'll take Dimitrios as well. He's a good man. Um, so where do you ho hover over the general to see their... To see their... Attack... Uh, to see their general ability? Yeah, you need to click on the general itself. Yep. Um, how do I call that? It's the um, eyeglass, maybe? Uh, oh, this one, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so... Uh... All right. Now you need to click on stats. Ah, cool. Yeah. Oh, That's my God. 
<laughs> you see what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, deary, deary me. The UI has struck me so many times in this game. I'm still learning about the UI, even to this day. <laughs> How did I not know this? Mosca, like, every video, like, Mosca will send me a message saying, Bro, if you press Alt, uh, Shift, R, then this will happen. Do it. And I'm like... Oh, shit, really? <laughs> like, shortcuts in UI are not my strong point. <laughs> but you can see all the general basics here, guys. Um, unbeknownst to me, apparently. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> oh, my God. If anyone's yeah, been wondering why I, have, I the same. Yeah, why I haven't been clicking on this in my Solucid campaign, it's because I didn't know it existed. <laughs> I just thought that this was, like... They were just saying stats for the traits down here. <laughs> I didn't realize you could actually click on that. Oh, I'm so happy. Wow. That's really cool. Well, you can at least see all the different traits. Because I'm assuming if we look here, plus two morale, attack plus two. If we say infantry plus two as well. Just think about this. This guy's quite a good manager. But if we go on to Antigonos, I'm assuming when we go on the stats, you can see four morale. Uh, one. Ma uh, he doesn't have... He has one for cavalry. Uh, and yeah, he's, he's really good. Look at that. Taxes plus 15. Really good. Hit points, combat versus Greeks. Oh, he's, he's cool. He's really good. Uh, but how's his, uh, how are his, uh, his supplies going now? Is it still belt buckled? I'm assuming he's quite a good log logistician. Maybe if we, so has this guy got belt buckled on as well? Let's have a look. Blooded. Yeah, belt's tightened. So let's get rid of you. We'll bring you back to to fight the uh, rebels if you want to. Uh, I will also have a look at this guy, see whether he's still well supplied. <laughs> uh, where are we? Inexperienced commander? No. Yeah, he's rationing already. This general and his army are rationing their food a bit due to shortages. So we're going to leave him out there for, for a few turns and see what happens. He's out in the desert. <laughs> Which is cool. Um, let's have a look at this guy though. Let's have a look first of all at the uh, faction announcements. Uh, no, uh, so nothing. Oh, we got the Olympic Games. Yes. So do you want to talk yeah, about the Olympic talk Games then a bit? Yep. So, the Olympic Games, if you were also an Europa Barbarorum player, you'd love that mechanic. Because see, it was one of my favorites in that game. So, of course, I had to bring it to Reese. And uh, now, thanks to the Rome Remaster, Things it's even better because in the Olympic Games they had uh, like 25, I think, different games that uh, people could uh, win at. Yeah. And uh, thanks to the max number of traits that we have in this game, so I can set a trait to be given to generals a max amount of, of times. Yeah. And uh, I managed to do that for the Olympics, so your generals in total. They will only you'll every Olympic Games you'll we you will only have 25 winners to run that. Hmm. That's a really cool stuff. But uh, to talk about this mechanic, it's pretty simple. Basically, around every eight, uh, sorry, four years, you'll get the Olympics for the Greeks, and yeah. um, it will de either depending your general with will, will uh, either. Get the trait or not, depending on his um, on his traits. Like if he's a vigorous general, you'll get a lot more chances to get the Olympic tra trait and to win. Yeah. And the more vigorous he is, like uh, more athletic he is, the better chances he has to gain it. And uh, if he gets the trait, then it's a really fun to see your generals getting that. They get some extra bonuses. There's even a trait where they can get a statue building their city in their honor. So it's a really fun mechanic. Oh, awesome. That's really cool. Uh, when does the first Olympic Games, is it after 16 turns that it happens? Or does it happen slightly earlier? It's a bit slightly earlier. Let me just confirm in the trait file. All right, so it should start uh, at the sixth turn in the game. Cool. 
your generals will start getting the eligible for Olympic traits. Then you need to leave them to wait another turn, and they will get those traits. Awesome. So, Sorry. which turn are we in? Uh, turn four now, I think. But uh, we've got oh, these yeah. guys, Illyrians. So we're just going to auto-resolve this, guys, obviously. It was a draw, apparently, but we should have won that battle. Uh, looks like this one as well. Let's auto-resolve this one, see what happens. He gets defeated. So let's see what whether they get any traits from that as well. I know it doesn't. everything doesn't happen instantly. Like, we have to do a few battles and stuff for them to all get their traits. So, uh, yeah, we've taken this settlement. Let's enslave as well, and let's see whether there was any traits gained there as well. That's all the end turn. So not quite at the minute, but as I say, it takes a few turns. You know, if you got traits every single battle you ever did, then uh, obviously that's um, that would just make everything so OP. So, <laughs> uh, but that's cool. Yeah, um, yeah, quite a challenge because of that. Because previously in, in the Rome original, you had like 200 settlements. Well, less than that, 199. Yeah. And, uh, well, if your general conquer, like, uh, 10 settlements, it would be great. You'd have a great conquer. Now, if you conquer 10 settlements, you conquer what? Uh, Cyprus? Yeah. Yeah, that, so um, I really had to um, um, balance that, because uh, at the same time, we can't allow generals to gain traits so fast as before, but at the same time they should also get some traits, some nice command traits from conquering cities. Yeah, cool. So this guy got Spear Carrier as well, which is cool. Uh, so, well, Antigonos, not just any old this guy. It's bloody Antigonos. Uh, but yeah, so we've taken that battle. Let's go to Lycnidos or whatever it's called, and let's see whether we can uh, have a heroic victory there or something and see whether we can force him to get some extra uh, traits would be really cool. Um, so yeah, we've gone through the supplies, haven't we? Oh, we've got uh, expanded wife traits as well now as well. And I actually did notice someone before with one of those. So let's have a look. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the expanded traits for the people that are married as well? Yep. So... Those traits, I actually, I did them for my sub mod, mm. and uh, when I was working with Europa Barbararum too. So they are very fun mechanic that I decided to add them to Reese as well. It's uh, mm. quite simple, nothing too uh, extra, but it's nice because you like. It's uh, ancient history, and you see that women in the game they are pretty much silent, not present at all. So it's mm. nice to see. Uh, a bit more of them. Basically, they have two traits. That's, uh, that depends on the type of uh, general you have, uh, which will influence those traits. So yeah. you, you have uh, the wife family health trait, which uh, when the, your general gets married, he will have chances to marry to, uh, for example, a modest family, a healthy family, a noble family, a powerful noble family, really depends. And then yeah. there are some more funny traits, like your general might marry a ugly, ignorant wife, <laughs> um, charming, naive wife, a lovely wife, a charming, bright wife, a tedious wife. It really adds some more flavor to it. Yeah. And cool. uh, well, depending on the traits, they will also impact a bit your general for example an ignorant wife will give him a, a malus of one less point of management uh, mm. ugly wife will give a decrease on fertility and of course a charming wife more fertility really depends yeah i'm trying to find this guy now maybe it was the guy that just died <laughs> this guy also doesn't like greeks because he's a Macedonian. Uh, fair play. But yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> I think... Uh, I think uh, I've just... <laughs> the guy that had the trait has just died, unfortunately. Let's try and find uh, someone else. Surely there's someone else. Um, can have a look at our... 
our family tree, well, actually. So... You were talking about portals, and um, one thing that I forgot to mention, actually, is that uh, there's also a trait that tracks the general's experience in battle. Mm. So, so it's um, pretty nice as well, because we didn't have that before. Yeah. It's also something that you see in the other games like Europa by or I um, think Rome Total Realism had something like that as well. Yeah. And it's also for flavor and also useful for um, the general uh, overall bonuses. Because the more experience your general becomes, the more battles he has, mm. the more he will increase in that trait. Yeah. For example, let me check. And then it will also impact um, some of his other traits. Like he might get some more, uh, some command traits if he, he has more experience. At least for Car Kartash, it happens like that. Yeah. It really depends. So yeah, we've just got here to Halkionius again. Apparently he's the, the one with all the traits at the minute. He's So you can see, noble family. This general's wife comes from a wealthy aristocratic family who sits at the top of the social pyramid and, expert, uh, and exerts great influence and power. Through private dealings, they can help augmenting her husband's career and increase his chances in running for public or military offices. So yeah, you can see one of those as an example. I'm not sure we've got any more examples, but I'll keep checking anyway. Uh, but yeah, really cool. Uh, I do like that a lot. Um, to at least give the women of the game, you know, at least at least a uh, a role. Uh, because previously, you know, CA designed it so that they can't do anything. They're just there. That's unfortunately what CA designed it like at the start. Um, so the, unfortunately, the mod team can't change that either. Um, so yeah. Uh, it's good to get uh, a bit of influence in there as well for the women of the game. Um, cool. So and, uh, it's a work in progress. Sorry, what was that? I was saying it's a work in progress. Like last yeah. week, I even added a new ancillary for a famous woman for the Ptolemaics or the mm. Ptolemies. So it's uh, pretty cool. I will, uh, if I have time, I will add more, depending on. Uh, where, whether they existed or not. Yeah, so cool. we'll see more. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Um, so yeah, you can see lots of these, lots of these different traits. They all link together, guys, and that is the really cool thing about this. So, for example, this Kalas of Argos Oresticon. He is a Rudite. While still an amateur in the scholarly field, this man is widely recognized to possess both true knowledge and a flair for learning. So obviously, that trait then is gonna then influence whether he gets one of the scrolls ancillaries or whether he gets interested in the humanities sciences war and mathematics that sort of thing whereas if you go back across to um some of the other people like there was one guy that's dumb i can't remember is it you you're not dumb are you don't think you're dumb but there's uh i think is one of the guys in here this guy so he here he's slow so you can see some of the traits in here. He doesn't want to be a scholar. Uh, there was someone in here that said they don't want to be a scholar, basically. Um, that was quite cool. So he's an inferior trader, this guy as well. Uh, might be. This is the problem. I, I keep forgetting where we go. <laughs> this guy's wealthy, though. Uncomfortable around Greeks as well. He's rather lazy. Uh, but yeah, so here we are. Here's one. So... Even though, wait, this guy, let's have a look. Is he clever? I can't remember. So he's intelligent, but even so, he still ignores military studies. He's not interested in the military at all. Whereas this guy over here, who has those cool traits uh, of being a um, interested in studies, he, of course, is going to pick up, uh, pick up traits a lot easier. Oh, so we lost the guy in Pella who we were trying to train up. That's a bit annoying, but uh, let's get uh, let's get Antigonos back in there. Let's see if we can give Antigonos even more traits because he's already an absolute beast uh, of a man. And uh, yeah, let's click that end turn again, and we'll talk about something relatively uh, different. So, um, oh yeah, let's talk about the civil and military officers as well. So we've already seen one of the guys with Stratahorse as one of the uh, officers. So is there just a certain number of officers per Greek nation? I guess. 
And uh, how do those? How are those given out? Are they just given out to the best candidates at the time? Um, yes, pretty much. Uh, we have chosen a different path than what uh, Riz had before, because uh, players uh, will remember the ones that are playing right now. They know that uh, their generals had a military career that they they will go from, for example, Lokias, Tetrachos. Spayer Archers, not sure if I'm saying this correct, but um, it didn't make much sense before because, for example, you you had a, a general that was and you were taking him, leading your full armies, and he was getting trades saying, oh, this general can now command uh, 50 war horsemen. Mm -hmm. And then he would get another trade, oh, he can now command uh, 100, 100 horsemen didn't make sense because what do you mean I'm leading him all my armies uh, with all my armies so yeah uh, so what we did was we changed that mechanic for that point of view so now they don't grow uh, in that career type what they do is as they uh, start progressing military they will start uh, hiring uh, officers for those posts okay cool so they they will get some uh, an experienced Lokias, an experienced Chili Arches, which will give him bonuses. Because as mm. your general, as you start to improve and get experience, you get better officers. So it's a really cool mechanic. Yeah. And then, yeah, apart from that, we also have uh, a lot of other traits regarding mili military, which also uses the really cool feature from Rome Remaster where we can limit the amount of traits that channels can have. And uh, for example, the Ptolemaics, they will get um, a trait called Epistrategos, which mm. is pretty much the Strategos trait, the main yeah. leading general, let's say. And uh, for these traits, only two generals can get it. Cool, yeah. And so then, for example, I know that Athens can get uh, two generals to become a strategos, but only the Ashians can only get one. It really depends. But then the Ptolemaics, they can have uh, ten uh, generals that are strategos because it's a really huge empire. Yeah. It really depends. So you can see this guy has just had a had a big fight, and I believe. He's probably got this blooded trait from that as well, then, that um, this general's commanded of the army for the first time. Um, so exactly. you need to, like, build that up, of course, don't you, uh, over a series of battles for your troops to then have uh, confidence in you. So if we auto-resolve this and uh, use the console to, uh, to win the battle once again, um, let's see whether we can get any uh, traits from this boy. Uh, let's enslave, and let's see. So he is well supplied now, which is good. He's also hardened now, well well accustomed to war. Um, an enemy camp captured. The battle is over, and the victorious troops have captured the enemy camp, gathering plentiful spoils, which is really cool. Um, and you can see, yeah, uh, he has now gone yeah. back to full supplies, which uh, he wasn't at before. Let's have a look at Zopyrus as well. How's he doing with his rations? He's still rationing. He's still rationing out in the desert, <laughs> enjoying himself. Um, but yeah, I probably should have moved one of these guys, but I don't think I know how to do that. So, uh, well, Talking I about the spoils, um, we also added a cool mechanic for spoils of victory. So if your general gets that trait, you'll get some money as well. Oh, cool. Nice. So just get a bit of boost of money as well if you get spoils of war. That's that's cool. That's really cool. I do like that a lot. Um, so yeah, Another cool thing for the military offices. Sorry. Yes, yeah, right. Is that um, we have a lot of military offices, so I won't talk uh, about them because it's it's a lot of stuff really. Mm. But um, a very cool one is the Elephanta Tarkos. Oh, cool. Which is basically. The commander of the Elephant Corps. Oh, nice. It's, uh, yeah. And uh, why it's cool, because we didn't have this in the Rome original, but uh, it looks like in um, 
ROM Remastered, there is a, an effect called Elephant Command. Mm. So basically, your generals with this if effect, they will get uh, command bonuses if their army is composed of more than 30% of elephants. Oh. And it, it also seems to improve elephants in general. So it's a really mm. cool trait. Yeah, cool. I want to get that straight away. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so with like the religious traits as well, is it their religiosity that is the thing that's the trait? So like how religious they are, or or is it also, you know, they will worship a certain god, for example, like maybe uh, Zeus or Dionysus or Artemis or Hera or. Uh, Atlas or wh whichever god I guess is the the temple in the city as well Well To be honest, I haven't worked much on religion from that point of view. We have mm. only been working on the cultural traits Yeah, and the, the impact it can have depending on the if you are staying in a city with a different culture for those religion traits I haven't worked on it because uh, like for this version we are working on the Greeks and then we still have to uh, discuss the religious buildings, the temples, decide which gods. It's still a lot of work to do. Yeah. So I, I haven't delved into that yet. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's 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 cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could previously get the uh, get the ancillaries for um, different different uh, gods, like a priest of stuff. So I'm assuming they're probably just still in still in the game, are they? Those like priest of saturn and stuff yeah. like that most of most of them they will still be in the game because we kept them and uh, you also have quite a few new ones especially for Carthage, but also for others yeah cool sounds good so i mean the takeaway guys really is the fact that you know all of these traits are all so interlinked now and it gives you so much opportunity to role play if you want to and like i say if you don't want to or you have a massive empire you might want to spend a little bit of time looking at the looking at the traits of uh, certain governors and generals and stuff like that but you don't need to if you don't want to i mean it's a, it's a feature there that is for everyone who wants to you know role play and i i would suggest definitely at the very least making sure you check all the traits of you the people you want to be generals because you're going to have such an easier time getting command with a general that is vigorous and with a general that is charismatic and intelligent so um definitely make sure that you're checking those traits for when you want generals uh, and then governors wise of course you know even if you have someone who's terrible you, they're gonna have to govern somewhere you can't send them out into the desert to die i mean you can that's an idea, actually. You could send them out into the desert to die. Uh, but uh, maybe someone with less governor traits and not as good governor traits, send them to a town or a, a large town. And someone with good governor traits, send them to a city or to a place that's very rich. So, uh, yeah. You do you want to pay attention to that a lot more now, which I think is really cool. And it gives you all that chance to, um, to role play as well. Let's see whether we can get another little trait with this guy. Um, let's exterminate this time and see whether we get anything from that. So we have looked at him and, before. Um, that was a really good explanation, Brad, for sure. Like the main point is, like I don't want players to be to waste a lot of time checking every single trait. But if they want, if they want to focus on a guy like almost RPG like, they can track the guy. They can see him growing up, getting traits. It's really fun, but if they want to ignore that, that's fine. Just check the wish bonuses he, they have, like com good command, management. All right, just send him to the city or send him to lead your armies. That's fine. Yeah, cool. And um, like you can see, we've, we've taken this city and now that I exterminated, you can see instant trait that we definitely didn't have before. Prudent despoiler. Although this man took the biggest share of the spoils of war for himself, his men perceived it as just as a just reward for his leadership in battle and conduct of the military campaign. For the sake of the public good, the goods were cautiously taken away and sold, making quite a fortune with the merchants. He's also got, last time we had the plus one influence and minus 10%, didn't we? That was like camp raided or something like that. I can't remember. Camp, enemy camp 
um, uh, sacked or something like that, wasn't it? I can't remember the exact wording. Uh, but now it's em- oh, yeah. enemy treasury captured. So yeah, it's it's really cool. Like you can see, it's everything is dynamic now, which I think is awesome. Really, really cool. Also means that you'll get more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and who doesn't like more money? Who doesn't like more money? That's right. Well, we got more candidates for adoption. He's an unexperienced commander, but we'll accept him. Oh, you can see trait increase for Krateros. He's now a confident commander as well. Uh, oh, we've got a few uh, trait increases over here as well. Lo- loads of them. This must be uh, from... What about the Olympics? Yeah, so let's have a look. Kalas, what did he get? So Kalas, he got... Uh, Agonistes. Oh, so the Olympic Games. Okay. So, oh, these guys, they all got the Olympics ones. So, I guess next turn we're going to get the Olympics. Oh, no, we're only on turn four. So, Um, yeah. Next one. So, maybe the next one. So, we definitely want to smash that end turn, don't we? And have a look at those traits as well. Um, So, let's just talk a little bit about the cultures now as well I, like i say we're going to do a video on it uh, but while i press the end turn now there's so many greek cultures i think there's like 14 greek cultures isn't there or something like that yeah there are so many like i had to uh, work <laughs> on the triggers for them and it took a, a pretty good amount of time working on them and uh, it's still not working properly as i want <laughs> at least yeah, so I, but, I, I um, sorry, go on. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really funny, and um, but it's a very nice mechanic. You like it just shows where your generals are from, and uh, it means that not every everything is Greek now. Like, well, hmm. they are still kind of Greek, but now you'll have Ma- Macedonians, you'll have Dorians, especially in Sicily and other regions. Let me check the cultural traits. But it's um, a really nice feature. It really shows how the Greek world is kind of a melting pot full of different cultures. Our thanks. Yeah. And I forgot that we had Kaunos over here. <laughs> Completely <laughs> forgot about that one. Uh, but yeah, no. So there's loads of new Greek cultures, guys. And that's basically to simulate the fact that, of course, all the Greeks are all very different. And they all kind of hated each other. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Like, if anyone has the idea that the ancient Greeks were this one big happy family, they were, like, the most dysfunctional, backstabbing, betraying, violent family that you'll ever come across in your life. (laughs) They hated each other. So it kind of... uh, It kind of... uh, Oh, May, do you want to become my protector? We'll take that. Um, So it's kind of to simulate that. To make sure that, you know, you're not going into regions. And if you've got a governor, say, for for example, an easy example that everyone can get behind, that everyone knows. Sparta and Athens notoriously hated each other. So if you've got a Spartan governor in Athens, what do you think is going to happen? They're not going to be quite ha- quite as happy <laughs> as they might be with an Athenian or even a Dorian or a... Um, you know, another different, uh, another different culture. I'm trying to think Ionian or, or something like that. So it's just to simulate that and simulate all the different Greek cultures, which I think is really, really cool. Um, especially, yeah. Yeah. So it's really cool because before you had just a Greek general and uh, whatever you 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 wanted. Now you have Macedonians. Indo Greeks, Bosporans, Cypriots, uh, Epirots, well, Northwestern Greeks, Aeolians, it's it's a lot. It's really adds up uh, to a lot of stuff here. So it's very interesting. Yeah, and you can see of course that that icon next to all of these guys, you can see that you can see this is Ionian culture. We've got over here I I uh, Aeolian Macedonian, of course, is the sun. But we can see the Olympics has been done. Olympics has been done. So uh, we had many people lose. So this guy lost. So let's go find his Olympic trait. Um, Here he is. He was an unsuccessful athlete. 
uh, unfortunately. Uh, but he has competed in the Olympics. But then we've also got a couple of people who actually won, which is really cool. So uh, this guy, Ortizion, he actually won. So Olympic victor. He gets influence and minus unrest from that. This man has brought great honor and fame to himself and his people. That's cool. That is really cool. Uh, and you can see, let's have a look at his traits. He's selfish and optimistic. So both of those things probably, uh, you know, very key to be a very successful athlete. But he's also vigorous as well and bright and magnetic. So, yeah, very likely to probably win with some traits like that uh, compared to some others. Uh, which is really, really cool. I do like yeah, that. Exactly. It's one of the generals you would want to stay close to you. Yeah, exactly. And probably send out uh, fighting everyone uh, because they are a beastly commander. And you can see all these generals, they've all got different uh, different uh, cultures. So this guy is uh, Northwest Greek. These guys are Macedonian. Uh, and of course, they're going to convert the land based on characters as well so yeah uh, really cool indeed to see all those represented in the game um i got the praise all for um, doing the call for that and the guys mm. for doing the texture work is that looks really cool yeah it does it does look really cool it's so easy to see as well once you get used to it i was going to toggle fog of war then let's uh, let's get a, gr a heroic victory in here then for uh, uh, Pelion. Uh, no, sorry, Bryzos. He's uh, sieging Pelion. <laughs> so let's smash that in. Console command once again. Heroic victory. Glorious. And let's uh, enslave again. And let's see whether we've uh, again added in any new new traits. So he's a prudent despoiler. I think we got that last time, didn't we? But then this time, again, enemy camp captured because he's gone for a new camp. But he's a heartless ruler now. I don't think he believed uh, he had that before. Uh, but yeah, now he, he... I think... I'm not sure he was so wealthy before. Maybe that's new. Uh, and he's renowned now as well. Uh, due to his achievements and noble behavior, this man has gained quite a reputation within the common people. So, yeah, definitely uh, added in a few traits from that that's really cool and let's have a look at our poor guy left in the desert so pyrus uh so pyrus why does that name ring a bell what so pyrus is that so pyrus do you, do you know why that name rings a bell <laughs> i don't know Kind of reminds me of a pirate. Yeah, I think is that in um, Twelfth Night by Shakespeare? I'm not sure. No, sorry, a, a Midsummer Night's Dream. Hmm, I can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, but it just it definitely rings a bell. Maybe I was just reading about someone called Zopyrus at some point. Um, but yeah, no, fantastic. Right, should we uh, should we jump across to Carthage, or is there anything else with the Greek traits that we want to talk about? Well, not much. Maybe um, quickly jump to the Seleucids. Oh, yeah. Build the uh, trade that the uh, faction heroes get. Let's, um, and then we can jump to Carthage. Let's see what a mess the AI has made of my, my beautiful Seleucid Empire. My beautiful friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Poor AI. I don't know what they will have done to it, but they, they won't have done anything nice. That's all I can say. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't mean that many turns. Yeah, here we so are. Things are pretty much the same. Oh, yes, the boys, Antiochus. Antiochus the first, actually. Um, heroic savior. He's got heroic savior. Uh, let's find uh, Seleucos. I believe Seleucos actually starts in Seleucia, right? Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, it is Seleucos as the original factionaire, isn't it? So... Uh... Yeah, I think so. Uh, it starts near, uh, like, the Middle East. With an yeah. army, actually. Oh, does... Oh, yeah! He starts over here, right? No, that's a captain. Uh... Oh, yeah. A bit more to the south. 
Ah, uh, here we it's are. Been close to it's Lucas, yeah. what a man. Oh, he's got a fat army already. What a beast. Uh, so yeah, you can see the the thing here, Seleucid. This man is a direct descendant of Seleucus the First Nicator, one of the generals of Alexander the Great, of course. Um, he is spiritless, though. He is spiritless. Oh no, he could be of poor health, but one way or another, this man's weak life force will hinder him in life. Oh well, just gonna have to wait for the third Antiochus before you, uh, you know, get some really good, uh, really good leaders. <laughs> Um, king of the Upper Satrapies as well. This general has been named the King of the Upper Satrapies, and he should rule them from Seleucia. So is this the is this the trait you were talking about? Yeah, that's the trait I was talking about. Right. Well, let's move him to Seleucia then. I don't know how it's going to choose the Seleucos when I do this because I'm sure there's about hundred Seleucos in the empire. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's try. Uh, so, so show cursor step six six. You, you can always reset his movements. Oh yeah, that's true. I, how, do you know the the console command for that? Yeah, it's character underscore reset, I think. And yeah. then you need to write this while you have the general click, so it will uh, reset his movements. Uh, okay, I'll just try Seleucos one more time. Yeah. Uh, I I think it's because I didn't uh, capitalize it. <laughs> Four, three, three, three. Oh, it is Seleucos. Good. Get in Seleucia, my friend. And they're really unhappy in Seleucia, actually. Oh, well. Uh, maybe... Did you make them more unhappy, Seleucos? You evil man. No, you actually didn't. I wonder whether the other guy is making them really unhappy. And Andrew Marcos. No, Andrew Marcos is making them happy. So get back in, my friend. They're very upset. Although it is Macedonian here, so um, I'm surprised they're so upset. Where's that unrest coming from? Squalor. Oh, it's because they're... <laughs> the AI the AI's let this city get to 2,500 above the upgrade level. Come on, AI. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, cool. Uh, so let's should we press the end turn, and will that then give him an extra trait then when he uh, when he's ruling in Seleucia? Yeah, it will. It'll be a cool mechanic. Cool. So we're watching unless the, the city is levels. Yeah, we're watching the really cool and clever AI movement of the troops there. Fantastic! <laughs> Thank you, AI, for your glorious movement of troops. But yeah, um, yeah, really cool. I do, uh, I do love it that. Pretty trait. much sets you to like send your faction here for the Silo kids to fight in the in the east, while your faction leader fights in the west. That's how it was. Yeah, cool. So one ruling in the ruling in the east, and one uh, fighting yeah. in the west to try and retake Greece or. Uh, uh, parts of Anatolia, which is good. Can you change your can you change your air then and uh, pop them in the city? Then I guess will they? I, I'm assuming they'll lose those traits then if you change your air off the guy um, that you put into Seleucia. Yep. I think so. I I will have to check the triggers, but I think that if he is not here, he will lose it. Mm. I'm not sure now. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and, and as everyone knows, I love the Seleucid. So <laughs> Perseus will accept you. Seleucia, right in the middle. Already rioting. Our capital. Uh, and you can see per faction air as well. Here we go. Administering the upper satrapies. Very nice. Also, this general's wife comes from a, a very wealthy family. So he's got a powerful family. Not just noble family of his wife. Powerful family, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, he is now administering the Upper Satrapies. The Upper Satrapies comprise the eastern half of the territories conquered by Alexander. Typically, everything east of the River Tigris, from the Zagros Mountains in the west to the borders of India in the southeast and Central Asia in the northeast, including the provinces of Media, Persis, all those provinces. Um, 
So here we go. Do do do. After his treaty with Seleucus first, yeah. Plus management, plus lot, and ten percent bonus on all trade. And he's also a senator. So this man is one of the 300 senators who rule over the semi-independent city of Seleucia, one of the greatest cities of this time period. Uh, yeah, very nice. So should we talk then about the Democrat, uh, Democrat and oligarch uh, political system as well? Or is that just for Carthage? Um... Well, there is a political system for the Greek factions mm. where, for, for example, if you are in a faction where the Democrats used to have more power. Uh, if you get an oligarch straight, your general, he will get a malus. But if mm. he's an, in a faction where the oligarchs used to rule or have more um, power, and if he gets an uh, oligarch straight, he'll get bonuses. So it's a pretty cool feature. Yeah. I will expand it once I have more time. But uh, basically, it's uh, the constant fight between Democrats and oligarchs, so it's very yeah. good. <laughs> uh, and just remember, guys, as well, so in here, like Andrew Marcos, he's got the uh, satrap of uh, Babylonia here. Let's see if we can find anyone else that has, like, a satrapy or something um, as their traits. That's not a general... Let's go probably around Antioch, we might find someone like Antiochus. So this guy, you can see, here he is. He's the satrapy of Syria. So you can actually, of course, move these retinues if you want to. Um, so if we take you, for example, uh, we should be able to move that, right, into someone else. Uh, and I believe we do it here, don't we? Or no, we go to move followers. Yeah. So you come into here. And you go and find your general, uh, and you you can sort you can sort it of course as well. Uh, we got generals there, so let's go and try and find one of the satraps. So you you have the uh, bibliophylax. That's not a satrap. <laughs> Cassandra satrap of Susian. So for example, if we wanted to uh, give you something else, we could give you something else. We could give this guy that. And confirm, and it's gonna give uh, this guy satrap of. Is that so? Is that that's the way round, right? So yeah, to move them to follow Cassandra. So we're pressing that to move that to him. So if we wanted him to have like everything, say our faction heir, if we can find our faction heir, which I can't, I probably can't find. But say we want uh, per many on the morbid. To have a satrap of Babylonia because he's now governing there. We could just do that. It's going to take nine turns to get there. It'll take less turns the closer they are, guys. So, uh, so for example, this guy, it's only four turns for the satrap of Medias. But if you're in the same city, it should only be about one or two turns. So, of course, you can move these around if you want. Which I think is the idea, isn't it? Because, of course, if your satrap of Syria then goes off to uh, Egypt to fight, they're not going to be the satrap of Syria anymore, are they? So, um, yeah, you can give uh, give those traits to whoever's governing in the region, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, so that Senate thing as well. So the Senate of Seleucia. Will just random people get the Senate trait, or will that just be just for governors that go into Seleucia, I guess? Yeah, it's a mechanic only for governors that go in Seleucia. Okay, cool. Nice. It's just pretty simple. They just need to spend a, tra a turn there, and they will get it. Yeah, I love the humor as well. I was just reading the uh, sleeps while watching dramas. This man's boredom with dramas is beyond concealment. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, good. I love that. I love the humor that you've added into all these as well. Really cool. Um, yeah, nice. The dramas, they, um, like, players remember the traits from the Romans where they either like or, or hated races. Yeah. And, uh, and the arena fights. Now for the Greeks, we also have that mechanic for dramas. Mm. They can really enjoy dramas or they can really dislike them. Yeah. Oh, cool. Fantastic. So should we move across to Carthage? Because I think you wanted to show off Carthage quite a bit as well. Some of the new traits for Carthage. And um, before we do, though, guys, just remember that 
everything else for Carthage hasn't been remastered. The same for Rome. So you can play Carthage absolutely fine and enjoy all these new traits as well. But just remember like the unit roster uh, and all that sort of things not quite remastered yet. So, uh, But we'll move across to them. Uh, yeah, hopefully well, it works. Carthage is still a long way to be remastered, but I had done a lot of work for Carthage for my uh, other Total War sub mods. So, since I was already working on the traits, I decided to just add the mechanics I had already done for them. Yeah. So, Carthage really has a huge oh, uh, and historical system for them, from uh, military and civil offices to special ancillaries and a lot of fun mechanics. For mm. example, try to uh, have a, a battle with your general and uh, make him lose. Okay. <laughs> he will get. Um, He'll, there are really high chances for him to be called by the council to Carthage, where he will be judged. And then he will have a few uh, possibilities, let's say. He can get... Um, Executed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to add that option, for sure, but sadly, I don't think um, Room Remaster <laughs> allow us to kill the generals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would also be like... <laughs> quite annoying as well your general just getting killed <laughs> even though it would be yeah even though it'd be very historically accurate um yeah so hasbrodal uh hasdrubal over here let's go and find someone to kill hello anyone about oh not a fort oh god damn it i wanted to attack that syracusan army well we'll wait a turn anyway for you Let's, uh, we know where the Syracusan army is now. So let's, have we got any more generals? Hanno, there we go. Go, go, go. It also depends on their faction. Because uh, now Carthage is divided in uh, multiple factions. Yeah. Not uh, like factions in the game, but political factions. So you you have the Barsids, the Annonids, the Magonids, the Giscan party, mm. and the Neutral party. So and it also impacts the traits. Yeah, so you can see here, public mourning in Carthage. Due to the recent loss of a great number of Carthaginian citizens in battle, the city of Carthage has established a public mourning. So I'm assuming that's due to losses in battle then as well um, that he has uh, he has done. Yes. Historically, we know it happened during the First Punic War when they mm. lost the naval battle against the Romans. So that's the basis for the trait. Cool. So yeah. Um, so but yeah, I'm saying so in game. I'm assuming he uh, uh, that that trait exists because of the lost battles that you've done in game, as well. That general probably has lost a battle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just I just made sure. him lose a battle. So. <laughs> Let's show oh, yeah. off some of the admiral traits as well, because I don't think we've talked about that that much. So. Uh, we'll go. We'll end the turn now, anyway. So clear victory. Did we get any traits? Uh, no, he's got zero zero command. So <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But uh, let's have a look. Yeah, he's just a Hanno Hananid. Well, let's end the turn and let's see whether Hanno will get recalled to Carthage for his defeat. Uh, well, actually, it's, if he loses the battle, he will get the trait right away. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, no, that's all right. Then he just needs to come to Carthage, and then he has to spend a turn for them to decide. Yeah. <laughs> Does, is that just in but, the region uh, of Carthage or in the city itself? Uh, in the city itself. city itself. Okay, cool. Yeah, but nice. uh, the decision will depend on a lot of stuff. Like, even... Mm. The uh, the general getting the trait will depend on his political support. Yeah. Because now Carthage has a trait called political support that tracks the political support that he has. And then, for example, if the faction leader is a Barsid and your general is a Barsid, he, has, he will have a lot higher chances of um, like not being executed, let's say, yeah. <laughs> during the council. So with the political support, how do you get and lose that is that just if you've got like famous generals you know 
having victories in the field and great governors and that sort of thing as part of your uh, sect? Pretty much. It um, has a lot of uh, triggers for that. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the, a lot of stuff. Like if the general does a lot of conquer conquests, especially special cities. Like if you conquer Syracuse, you'll get a special conqueror of, of Syracuse traits, but you'll get also a lot of bonuses and uh, your political support will increase. Yeah. And uh, well, then also if you are a good general or if you are smart, charismatic, you'll start to see your generals getting their political support uh, to increase. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. So the, he's barely supported Hanno at the minute. Um... But yeah, I don't see the trait telling him to go back to Carthage. Uh, but he did just fight the battle by himself. It, it didn't like... Uh... It's not always. Oh, okay, so oh, okay. otherwise it will be a bit uh, too much. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want players to like lose a battle every single time and yeah. have to go all the way back to Carthage. But do a few fights and you'll get that trait for sure. So yeah, let's defeat uh, Has Hasdrubal over here, and let's see. So public mourning again. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's try and make him lose a few fights. Um, yeah, but he's barely supported as well. The poor man. He's blooded. He's uh, faithful as well. He's spiritless. Well, let's press the end turn, and uh, yeah. It's bringing me back, this, you know. I played a, uh, a live stream campaign on version 0.4. Uh, you can check that out in the description down below, guys, if you want to. And uh, yeah, Carthage's roster. That's, uh, that's an interesting one, isn't it? <laughs> well, it has to be completely redone. I actually did a, like, 50-page article to present to the team before I started working working really with the re air with the race team yeah and uh, it was about Carthage roster because we will work on that well a long time from from now <laughs> to yeah to do but uh, it's still uh, it has a lot of things that will change for sure yeah I know I, I know I'm just I'm just taking a bit it's um uh... Like as I say, it's got it's not remastered yet, guys. But uh, I think it's take is it taken from Roma Serectum, uh, the roster. But as it is early game, oh my god, it, it's difficult because you have you have pretty much paper soldiers. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, they they're probably good enough to beat like they are good enough to beat Numidia, and in hordes they are good enough to beat like uh, an absolute massive wave of them. Oh, we lost Hasdrubal as well because he died on the ships. Oh, no. Uh, uh, there's, uh, like, you know, they're good enough to beat... Uh, but they're de definitely not good enough to beat the Romans. Like, to beat the Romans, you need an absolute manpower machine where you just have so many troops. Like, these Libyan light infantry are, are terrible. These Libyo-Phoenician infantry are okay, but they're quite hard to get early game. Although it looks like... The AI has been building up their recruitment capability, I guess. But yeah, they can't even recruit them in Carthage yet. So, uh, but yeah, it's a difficult, it's a difficult old, uh, old early game with Carthage. I've got to say, uh, when you're trying to fight the Romans. Right, let's go and get someone else killed then. You go and fight. You can also check the diplomats because. I also have uh, plenty of traits for them, so if you get oh, okay. a chance to look at the diplomat, you might see quite a few traits for him. It's oh, not yeah, guaranteed, cool. well, but uh, he does have some. Not uh, actually, yeah. Is he Polish diplomat, neutral party, foreign hostage. I mean, we're only very early in as well, guys. We're only seven turns in, so obviously the longer and longer you go through a campaign... You're going to have more and more traits for every single person, aren't you? And uh, more and more uh, going on. Oh, yeah, Hasdrubal died, so that's unfortunate. Right, Hanno, time for you to go and lose another battle then. <laughs> Find an army. Hello, armies. Any armies around? Any armies? 
There we are. Yeah, and hopefully you don't die. I, I know. <laughs> that would be the worst thing. Let's have a look. Barely supported still. Ignored by the people. Due to his uh, due to his few or bad achievements and nasty behaviour, this man is largely ignored by the people. I love that. Fantastic. He didn't have that before. That's really cool. Um, so, yeah. Nice. And, of course, he's just going to get worse and worse traits the more I slam him into other armies. <laughs> Would be cool if he yeah. has... Checking that, I will probably increase the chances. Let me... I'm going to check uh, the file right now for the chances. How do I reset the uh, the movement points again of this guy? Uh, you need to write console command character underscore reset right. and then uh, add this while you have the general click. Reset. There we are. Hello. There we are. Let's go. Uh, let's go again, my friends. <laughs> Poor Just man. Just check the. Oh no! It didn't. It didn't fully reset him. Uh, oh well. We can press end turn. It's fine. Just check the um, the, tra the trade file, and uh, well, if your general has battle holds superior to um, like to one, he has ninety percent chance of uh, getting the trade. Okay, so if he, oh, okay. if his odds to win are superior, you, he will get the trade like ninety percent of the times because it's like, why the hell did he lose? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, fair enough. If he doesn't have um, uh, higher chances to to win, like if it's lower, then it's just thirty five percent chances of getting the trade. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's you... why it's taking so long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he's fighting against an army that's twenty thousand times bigger than his his thirteen yeah. men. <laughs> but no, cool. I do really like that. And I love, uh, love that idea. Um, oh, more ship. More ships. <laughs> oh, this Admiral might get a trait or two. Yeah. You're getting to see some pre-release gameplay, guys, as well. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Victory! Taking capture. Especially the new ship models. Yeah, exactly. This guy. Right, let's go across to here, then. We've got... We had a... Didn't we have a big general? Go, you're a big general. That's like no one. Let's try and give him, like, boost his army up so much. So that he gets a load of, uh... He's got loads of men. And then make him lose. It's gonna take some time to bring him to Carthage. <laughs> uh, just, I'll just teleport him. Oh, yeah. That's bad. Uh, auto win defender. They defended fantastically. That was a really good shield wall the Numidian Light Infantry did. Clear defeat. Oh my god! 828! Yeah, you deserve to be summoned for that. Who was leading? Yeah. It must have been Carthalo. There we are. Uh, minor support. Unexperienced. Uh, it might have been uh, Himil Himilcott. Here, here we go. Recalled by the council. There we go. So you can see minus two influence, minus two command, minus two management. Well, him will cut. I'm sorry about that, my friend. But uh, let's go and get him across. So yeah, of course, guys, remember like this is really cool. Um, so move. Oh God, come on. Show cursor step. Sorry, guys. Uh, move character. I'm, I'm, ge I'm guessing you've all you're all getting a bit of a lesson on the console tonight as well. <laughs> uh, move character. Oh my god, was it? It was Himmel. Was it Himmel Cat? Or was it Himmel Cot? <laughs> ah, must have been Himmel Cot. Character. Himmel cut two five two five five three three four. There he is. Let's end the turn again then. And again, I spelt the name wrong <laughs> for the guy. Get him in Carthage, and we'll see what happens.
Vantage also has the Archon traits, because they are pretty much governor traits, mm. which uh, can be used for Cortes as well, since they also use Greek in their language. Yeah, yeah. But um, Rome, for example, they have a different system. They have the senatorial provinces and everything, mm. so it's, they couldn't have it. And uh, also, for example, the admirals, they also have a uh, unique trait for for the factions. The Navarchus or Navarchus or something like that. It's pretty much the commander of the fleet. Yeah. So if you get a really good admiral, he will get that trait. And yeah. it's just one per faction for yeah. Greek factions. Yeah, nice. But uh, like, there is a lot of stuff that has been added. I spent hours and hours balancing the system, adding triggers, and uh, still there's still work to do. And I hope that once we release this, I will get enough feedback from the fans to start making some changes. But it's a very good system. Yeah. So let's see. Well, no, I, I think I've broken the game. <laughs> The army, the army that I had then was just just disappeared. I have no idea where they've gone. Oh no! And they're not here anymore. Oh dearie me! I may have broken Himmelcott or oh, whatever he's called, Himmel, Himmel, Himmel something. Um. <laughs> oh well. He was indeed uh, executed. Yeah, maybe exactly. And his whole army. They were they were so annoyed by everyone. Yeah. They took decimation to a new level. Um, so we just uh, quickly just go across to the Ptolemies and just uh, just so we can see. Finally, we can we can conclude with a few of the uh, the Greek bits. Uh, but yeah, really cool with that. And I assume I'm assuming then the Romans are just the same as 0.5 then as well. Well, yeah, pretty much. The exception is that I reduced a lot of the bonuses that they had. Not too crazy, but for example, they had like console, which was giving plus four influence, mm. and it's simply a crazy amount. You would get yeah. Romans going around with 15 influence every time, <laughs> so I reduced that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Oh, cool. That's cool. Euclides over here. What a man. Um, no, who else have we got? Atalos. But of course, like, every, every faction will share the new traits that they, we have, so they will still be affected by the supplies yeah. system, the general experience system, every single thing that we have. <laughs> this guy's and pig ignorant if, as well. If your general, if your general uh, fights uh, too many battles, you may get the chance. You may to uh, get tired of war, mm. and you, you will want to rest for some time. There is a lot of things going on that uh, will be very fun for the players. Yeah, I just think it's so cool, like, um, the just everything to do with it, really. Um, oh, we forgot one thing. Um, and I was just going to say, guys, like, I... Like, make sure you do like this video. Make sure you do subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. Um, RAS Weekends has been going for a little while, and we've not had an interview for a couple of weeks. So, uh, massive thank you for Lusitanio to join us and explain all this, because I definitely could have not done a video by myself on this. This uh, <laughs> It's so in-depth, so massive, and it's so dynamic, that, and there's so many traits. Like you said, about, what, 1,400 traits? So yes, just for the Archon traits. Exactly, that's just those traits, and that's without all the rest of the different traits that are that are added in, that have been changed, that have been balanced to be more dynamic as well. And it just, if you want to role play, the world is your oyster now. Really is. It's going to be amazing when I uh, for my campaign, um, my story campaign that I do as one of the Greek factions. Uh, because it's going to be so helpful knowing all the different traits of everyone. And if you want to go that deep and you want to, like, you know, min-max your whole economy and your governors and everything like that, you really can. And you, 
I've noticed you start to get to know your characters a lot more. There's a point in Rome Total War, even vanilla, after your starting characters where you kind of just kind of forget your characters' names and you forget like any of their characters. Yeah. I mean, even the Romans, like the only time you kind of get a bit of personality is in the general speeches. So you just forget about them. Whereas now they've all got their own personalities and you can kind of vicariously add your you know, your take on their personality a bit as well. And it just means they're so much more memorable, for me anyway, um, all the characters. And I think that's fantastic. In a game where these characters are transient, they're only here for a little bit, they only stick around for a little bit of time, you might even get them killed in their first battle, they do. But, God, like, you will know what character was killed in the first battle, because now... Because you will have looked at all their traits and been like, this guy, oh my god, he's he's vigorous, he's uh, intelligent, he's charismatic, oh, he's also uh, brave, and uh, he's, uh, he's a tub thumper or, uh, or something like that, and he despises Gauls, and then his first battle with the Gauls, he dies. Like, you are going to remember those people and remember those characters in the game, which I think is just so cool now. Um, uh, which, yeah, I just love it. I think it's great. Good to know. Thanks for that. It's all right. I enjoy present. I enjoy really enjoy presenting this with you. My voice is not the best right now, but I uh, hope the fans will like it. And yeah. I can't wait for the release to for people to play it. Remember, guys, release twenty seventh of October, and uh, I just wanted to show one final thing, if I could. Um, <laughs> now, whether there is anyone with this trait, with this ancillary at the moment, I don't know. Do you know anyone with the uh, British turncoat trait at the start, Lusitanio? Well, <laughs> let me um, check the strat file. <laughs> I hope there is someone. <laughs> oh, we got we uh, the turn ended. Good. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, we've got no generals to start with. Uh, here we go. Belgioryx. Ah, yes, he has it. Fantastic. He's got it. <laughs> Belgioryx. And uh, <laughs> it's like the Spider-Man meme right now with me in the screen. <laughs> Pointing right at the screen. Spider-Man meme. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Um, that That is me, uh, apparently. Uh, with my headphones on. British turncoat. Um, so if you want to play with me, not in that way, but if you want to play with me in the game, uh, <laughs> you can uh, fight the British and you can get the British turncoat, uh, turncoat trait. <laughs> this is because, of course, um, me and Mosca, uh, he knows that I'm uh, a very big Francophile. So... He decided that I should have the trait British turncoat, basically. And the description is as follows. When this man gets angry, his face goes truly red. But so far, he has been a good ally, describing what he sees and saving us from possible ambushes. In 2,000 years, there might be a barbarian who's truly a great commander. But until then, this man will help out in exasperation where he can. Uh, and if the game allowed you to have benefits directly to singular... Uh, <laughs> singular trade uh, goods we would have also added a plus one to salt mining there as well but unfortunately we don't uh, and of course it's in reference to napoleon in 2000 years almost pretty closely uh, pretty closely matched in terms of time from the start on the mod as well so um but yeah thank you for adding adding me into the game lusitanio as well really cool you're welcome man I spoke with Mosk about that, and uh, well, I, uh, I kind of disagree about the image. I wanted you to take a photo of you, like, uh, fully naked with your <laughs> bird and your hair, like, uh, fully grilled. <laughs> like, a, like, to be a true barbarian. like a true Breton. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, maybe one day if you get crazy, we can read on the, the photo there. <laughs> I, I think I think Moscow might have kicked me off Discord if I'd sent him a picture of me fully naked. But anyway, <laughs> that's quite funny. Um, but I think I think there's no better note to end on end on end on than that, guys. Yes. <laughs> so 
If you have enjoyed the video, guys, like I say, please do like and subscribe. Make sure you join the mod Discord for the 27th of October release. Subscribe to the mod on this uh, on Steam as well. It'll be down in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, there's plenty more RAS Weekend videos out there, including other interviews on the histories of the nations, um, on the map, the gameplay, and guides on the economy and all that sort of thing, and the new units. So do check those out if you have enjoyed this video. Uh, but thank you very much for joining me, Lusitanio. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure as well. Thanks for having me. And uh, take care, man. Yeah, thank you very much. From me and Mr. Cherry, guys, over and out. We'll see you on the next video.